look into this X-ray film. This is also one contrast X-ray of the lower GI tract and this contrast X-ray is called the barium enema in anthroposter view. Then question is what do you mean by enema? An enema is the introduction of a liquid into the rectum through a small tube and it is called barium enema. So, barium in barium enema the, uh, the liquid is the barium sulphate solution. So, barium sulphate solution is used to define the anatomy of the rectum and also the distal part of the colon. How much barium sulphate is given? About 500 ml of barium sulphate solution is given for this study. So, what is the preparation of the patient for this test? Low residue diet for 3 days prior to the test to be given. Then a suitable purgative is given 2 days prior to the test so that the rectum and colon become free of some fecal matter and only liquid diet is given for 24 hours prior to the test and a high colonic lavas by plain water or normal saline without using the soap on the day of the examination. All these things done to evacuate the fecal matter from the lower part of the large gut and from the rectum. And what is done in this technique? I told you the contrast media used is a barium sulphate solution and time taken for the study is about 30 minutes to an hour. And in this procedure, the barium sulphate solution is passed into the anus through a tube as high as possible and then serial X-rays are obtained to outline the rectum and colon. Here all these are the colon, all these are colon. I will identify the different parts of the colon. You know the colon having different parts that is ascending colon, then transverse colon, descending colon, then sigmoid colon, then rectum and anal canal. So, in all the films, you can see the different parts of the colon, ascending colon, transverse colon, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, here ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and sigmoid colon and rectum and anal canal. Here also you can see the all the parts of the different parts of colon and somewhere you can see this one and this one, all these are due to peristalsis, this part or constriction it becomes narrowed, so it looks like this. So, where you can see these areas or this type of appearance, this is due to the peristalsis. Then what are the different uh, dimensions or length of the different parts of the colon? And the proximal part of the large gut is the cecum, it is about 6 centimeter in length, then ascending colon, it is about 15 to 20 centimeter in length, then transverse colon about 50 centimeter, then descending colon 25 to 30 centimeter, then sigmoid colon it is 40 centimeter and rectum 12 centimeter and anal canal it is about 2 to 5 centimeter. So, what are the things we can see here? We can see the ostration or circulation in the different parts of the colon except the here in the rectum you will not get this hostation, you will not get the hostation in the cecum also. And what are the other features or cardinal features of the colon other than the hostation? And other features are tinea coli and appendices epiploica. But this appendix epiploica and tinea are not demonstrable in the barium enema. Appendix, the very narrow radiopaque shadow is found and the length of appendix is about 6 to 10 centimeter though the length is very much variable. Then what do you mean by single contrast barium enema and double contrast barium enema? In the single contrast barium enema, the only barium sulphate is used as a contrast media. But in double contrast barium enema, it is used to define the normal and abnormal mucosal anatomy of the colon and rectum. But here two contrast media are used, one is barium and another one is air. So, the double contrast barium enema means it is a procedure 
wherein the barrier minima is given to the patient followed by pushing air through anal orifice into the rectum and anal canal and then it passes through the colon. Then abdomen and pelvis are seen radiologically. Double contrast barrier minima enhances any mucosal pathology of colon and rectum. So, in the medium enema study, we can see the different pathology in the large gut starting from the ascending colon up to the anal canal. Any tumor, any polyp or any obstruction or different type of ulceration, so many things we can diagnose from the barium enema study. So, with this, I will conclude the barium studies of the GI tract. But one thing I must mention that there are few side effects, though not serious, which may arise following the barium study like severe constipation, nausea, cramps, bloating and diarrhea. And it is also to be mentioned that all the things might not be able to fully visualize uh, in the GID due to overlapping of structures or insufficient barium sulphate and hence might not be able to detect small lesions or early stage of polyps. Hence studies like coronoscopy or endoscopy are preferred nowadays. So that is all for different barium studies of the GI tract. Thank you very much.